Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week is a graduate from Oregon Health Sciences University School of Dentistry. In 2007, he launched Sleep Dentistry Defined, providing caring, comfortable dental experiences for all his patients. Currently practiced from Beaverton, Oregon, please welcome Dr. Heath Lampy, DMD. How's it going, Dr. Lampy? Oh, great. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, man, that's so cool, dude. I'm glad you took the time to come on uh, the Dental Up podcast today. I know how busy you are, but uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, um, hey, I always like to start off talking a little bit about sports. And, uh, man, you guys are kind of crushing out there. I don't know if you're a big Portland Trailblazer fan, but they're uh, they're right up in the Western Conference, one of the best teams out there. Yeah. You into the- they are doing <laughs> They are doing better. I'm always worried about playoffs with them, though. Yeah, they always seem to kind of. It's been years since they really went deep, but uh, dang, they really are. Uh, they're kind of crushing. I think they're like third place or something right now. And uh, heck, no, I hope they keep it up. I remember when I was a little kid, like ninety ninety one. I think they were playing Detroit Pistons in the finals. It was really exciting. But that's been a while now. Oh yeah, that's what I remember too. Back in the nineties and even the eighties and. They were just a force to be reckoned with, and uh, you didn't want to go into Portland either. Their fans were really rambunctious, man. <laughs> all those, all those uh, timber jacks, or not timber jacks. You should see our soccer fans. They will <laughs> put any other soccer fans to shame. <laughs> that's Don't awful. mess with them. Oh man, yeah, that's Oregon's a beautiful place, man. I just love. Uh, been there a few times. My grand, my wife's grandparents are from Bend, Oregon, so uh, it's kind of a coastal area there. And uh, dude, I, I got hooked on the Dungeness crabs back in the day. We eating those things. I love those things to this day, man. Give me a chilled Dungeness, and that's like heaven on earth to me, man. That's a uh, it's, some... it's crab season right now, so come on up. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got I got the crab cooker around the corner. We get them from you guys. They freeze them and. Uh, <laughs> Thaw them out and give me that and uh, my Wall Street Journal and I'm a pretty much in heaven at lunchtime there just reading the paper and you know the the lady will look at me and she goes Sean you gonna have another one today and I'm like bring another one baby <laughs> and those are just appetizers but uh, I usually go through a couple of those then I'll have my scallops and shrimp man it's like good lord look at me talking about food man good, you gotta stop that good old seafood it's my it's my favorite too <laughs> yeah so cool. Well, dude, that's so good. Um, what about uh, football? Anything uh, you into football or baseball? Anything? I don't know. Does even what, what do you, what do you have? You don't even have a football team in Oregon. We, yeah, got... we don't even we don't even have football or baseball. <laughs> um, I'm at a point in my life where like I love sports, but I'd rather be out playing something than watching them. Yeah, I hear you. You know, it's kind of the point. Maybe now. maybe it's the dentist in me. You know, I'm a little uh, I'm a little hyperactive, so I need to be out doing stuff. You know, <laughs> exactly. Well, you guys out in Oregon, man. You guys are all those health nuts, man. You're all hiking and doing all the you know the fishing and heck and i think several months out of the year it's raining so you got to be doing those different activities for that huh but uh, when, it, when, it, when it rains you just go up to the mountains where it snows you know you go snowboard you hang out you go snowshoe it's awesome yeah i don't know about that snowshoe dude that's a lot of work man you gotta walk <laughs> it's all about cardiovascular health man it will uh, get you going Dude, wait till you're like 50 and you've made it. You're going to be sitting on that couch eating Twinkies and Ding Dogs. Come on now. <laughs> when I was young, I used to do backflips, standing backflips. And, oh, man, I was just such the athlete. And But it kind of goes downhill a little bit. You know, it's it's all your own, you know, with me. I, I, had, to, I, had, to, I had to give up skateboarding at 28 years old. It was a little too hard on my body, and I didn't want to break my wrists. Yeah. Well, t let me tell you a story of this. I have a motorized skateboard. It had a little Mitsubishi mm. 110 weed eater engine in it and uh, no brakes. And uh, it was called a, it's called a moto board. You could still buy them online for about a thousand bucks. But um, I used to drive that thing everywhere. And I was 33 years old, two kids. And I took off after a few pops, a few beers. And um, I took off for about an hour. My wife's like, where, where's Sean at? And 
I freaking went up to the elementary school and I was doing these figure eights on the motorized board. And then I clipped the side of something and it launched me in the air and I came down. I broke my wrist in 13 places. I got a plate and six screws still on it to this day. And uh, yeah, you just you can't do that crazy stuff anymore. So I, I got rid of that motorized skateboard right after that. <laughs> and, uh, you I know. think that's a good idea. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah, I was 28 and I was still skateboarding in pools and ramps and all that. And, oh. uh, I mean, it was amazing, but, uh, I, ha- I had to give it up. I was yeah. just, I kept on hurting myself, you know, a hamstring, a groin muscle, you know, fall on your elbow, fall on your wrist. Oh, absolutely. It takes its toll. Even, even if you have the pads, it takes its toll. Oh, absolutely. My boys are, our boy, I think my boys are probably old as you, uh, 34 and 32 respectively, but uh, they love that little skateboarding and like the ollies and the kick flips and jumping and doing I can all still, I can still do it. I, I busted out the skateboard last week. I can still do a kick flip if you can believe it. Can you believe that? When we did skate- I may be the only only dentist in the world that can still do a kick flip. <laughs> That's huge, dude. You got well, come on down here. I have Tony Hawk work with you, man. But uh, now I remember me when I was doing the skateboarding, I would do 360s and I could do like five 360s. I like keep going in a row and we used to just carve. We never did the kick flips, but to do the 360s where you just kind of go and then do it reverse 360. Then then we used to also do the handstands and you go down the we had this hill called Edwards Hill. It's a pretty steep incline on this road down in Huntington Beach where I grew up, and we used to do handstands down that hill and wiped out a few times there and got a lot of asphalt burns. But uh, yeah, the crazy yeah, downhill days. Skateboarding. <laughs> downhill, downhill skateboarding is still one of the scariest things I've ever done. Yeah, and especially with Dennis, yeah. man, your hands are your livelihood. You mess with those wrists or anything. I know, um, man. It's you can't. These do babies that. are insured. You got to insure your wrist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I remember when I got my wrist was so jacked up, and I had all these plates, and it was so cool because I was a manager of this laboratory, so. It was like, well, I wasn't at the bench anymore, but all I had to do is get my ass into work and just kind of talk to everybody and talk to the doctors. And, oh, man, that was just uh... – and then I remember like 10 years later, I broke my humerus, and that's the round ball in your arm, you know, up by your ouch, shoulder. Ouch. So I broke the humerus bone, and know how that happened. That was – uh in my boat, we had it to where we're going to like a fishing club meeting. So we all met down at the boat, my crew and stuff. And, and he had it to where one of my crew members had pulled open this escape hatch into the engines area, you know, to get something real quick. And he kept that little hatch open. And I went walking into the boat and I looked down at the last second and seen it. And I kind of went into this. It's like 10, 12 feet down to drop into this thing. My fat butt couldn't make it through the hole, but I kind of stopped with my arm next to the refrigerator area, and I snapped that ball, and I was like 48 on that, and that was a few, couple years ago where, dude, that's so hard, man. Who does that? I mean, and I was we so- need wrap, We need to wrap you in bubble tape. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I broke my legs, yeah. my arms, I broke my nose twice, I broke my fingers. I broke my uh, humerus when, uh, um, not my humerus, my femur when I was like two years old. I fell off a slide. My dad. Jeez. Yeah, man. They didn't think I'd make 10 years old, let alone 20. And here I'm 56, baby. <laughs> uh, dude, that's, yeah, I gotta, you know, I've learned to not be so crazy and, and think before you do. And so I don't, I don't do that stuff anymore. And uh, That's hard. That's hard as a guy, especially in <laughs> 20s and early 30s and teens yeah. we slowly figure it out though yeah it took me a while longer but i just know now you don't heal as quick and man it's just uh you know it's it's just you something uh, you can't do stupid stuff yeah, that's why i've got a lot i got a lot of advice to young dentists on taking care of your body just take care of it and don't be dumb <laughs> exactly <laughs> well we're going to get into that so tell me let's go ahead and dental up now so tell me, Dr. Lampy, um, why did you get into dentistry and at what point did you think, I want to be a dentist? So I grew up originally thinking I wanted to be a regular MD doctor. Okay. And then senior in high school, um, senior in high school, I got addicted to Jolly Ranchers. I mean, <laughs> I had Jolly Ranchers all the time, all the time. They're so acidic. I didn't realize it. So I went to the dentist and I had a ton of cavities and I'm like, no way. So the dentist was like, here, why don't you watch in a mirror while I do these? And so... You know, I'm looking at my Jolly Rancher teeth, and he's drilling on them and, uh, in the mirror, and I'm like, this, is, this seems kind of cool. Um, <laughs> so I did a little bit more research after that um, and uh, realized I could be done with school a little bit 
younger than being a regular doctor. I could be my own boss, um, and I could work a lot less and uh, do really well financially and um, take great care of people. No kidding. Man, what was your favorite Jolly Rancher, the green ones? <laughs> the apple? The red, the, uh, the fruit punch. Yeah, that, I love those things, man. Yeah, I remember that for sure. So what did they? What were the issues with the teeth? Were you getting um, just uh, just cavities, huh? I got cavities. I had Jolly Ranchers on my mouth for six months straight. <laughs> it's kind of like drinking Mountain Dew constantly. I didn't realize that you're 17 years old. You don't think about these things, but uh, I do now. So that's why I switched to sugar-free gum. I'm still on sugar-free gum to this day, 20 years later. There you go. That's awesome. Well, dude, tell me the, a little bit about your school. Where'd you go to school? Where'd you attend dental school? Yeah, I went to uh, Oregon Health Sciences uh, in Portland. Uh, I went there from 2003 to 2007. Um, and, uh, you know, I got to say it was really, really hard. Um, the instructors were really, really hard as well, and um, I'm so glad I got out of that place, man. <laughs> I know. I hear so many horror stories, and it's just they do everything they can to make it miserable for you, and I, I just think that would be yeah, nice. Yeah, they do. They... And <laughs> it's, it, dental school is a weird, weird experience, and um, some people like it, but I swear the vast majority of people I talk to, they did not have a good experience in the, yeah. there, and uh, a lot of a lot of instructors aren't very um, positive. They're not very helpful. They're meant to like cut us down, which I think is uh, totally wrong. Yeah, they shouldn't be that way. You would think, but uh, especially too, you want kind of the cream of the crop to teach you. You don't want the miserable guys that couldn't really make it as a dentist, or maybe they could make it as a dentist. But those are most of the guys that teach, though. Sadly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. Did, you, did you come out with a ton of debt or are you okay there? You, did you have like a half uh, yeah, million? I came out of school <laughs> with about 215 or 220 grand worth of debt, Dang. Um, which now looking back, that's a bargain now it, because most of the guys I'm talking to now, they're coming out with at least 400 grand. Exactly. Um, and it's uh, so I look back on it, I'm like, okay, it wasn't that bad. Um, it took me about I think, nine years to pay it off. I no made a big kidding. deal out of me getting that debt paid off and done with because I wanted that weight off my head. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I got a $1.7 million SBA loan and it took me about eight years to pay off, but I was so thankful when I was done, man. It, it can be done. You know, you just got to put your mind to it, but um, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. yeah I, I, I paid off the smallest. I had like, I think in total, I had like three or four different loans, maybe even five. And I paid off the smallest balance one first, just to make me feel a little bit good, you know, yeah. about the whole debt thing. And then I just took that money, the extra money from that once it was paid off and to the next loan, to the next loan. And finally, my last loan, I think it was like a $100,000 loan. And I finally had enough money to pay it off. And I called in and I told the gal, hey, I want to pay this thing off. And um, she's like, okay. Um, there was no congratulations after. Yeah, they're like, like that. yeah, they're like, there was, there was no pat on the back. <laughs> yeah, they're um, like, we want... I, I mean, I, I gave myself a pat on the back and I think I, I may have had a cocktail afterwards. <laughs> um, but they don't, they don't, you know, nobody, nobody throws you a party after you pay your student loans off. But no. it's for you and it's for your peace of mind and for your future. Get oh. those suckers paid off. Oh, I know. I was so excited. And it's just, it's so hard for some of these younger people coming out. I mean, to be even to be able to buy a home after that or to get married and even have children. I mean, your assist, you know, and even yep. just not even dental school. I think the kids that are coming out of college or anywhere, you know, from 50 to 100 to 150 grand. And that's that's a ton. But for dentistry, it's yeah, three, four hundred grand is the norm. And 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 that's like, OK, so, you know, that'll be probably be at least a twenty five hundred dollar a month payment when they're out of school. And then you got to live somewhere, too. Maybe that's like twenty five hundred grand, maybe more, maybe yeah. less, depending on where you're living. And like when it comes down to it, you know, maybe young dentists are making, I don't know, maybe 130 to 160 a year. And, you know, take home is maybe 80, 85 grand. You don't yep. really have much to live on after you pay your student loan payment and your house payment. I mean, no, you're you basically don't. living poor. And that's it, the truth. Yeah. And even that, you know, that 80 grand take home of the one sick, because they usually take about half, you know, darn government. But, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the medium home, um, you can't even afford, you make 150 grand, you don't even qualify. In California, I think the average home, I think it's six, seven hundred grand now for the medium and it's so ridiculous yeah. i mean it's not even yeah. con condos are like 400 you gotta, you gotta 500 to, i mean life is life is expensive school is expensive um you know buying a house is expensive buying a practice is expensive and of course you know you're 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 a doctor you want to buy a nice car too right yeah um Absolutely. maybe you have to buy two cars you know because you got your wife too and then it just never ends and really like it's a tough world out there if you don't 
if you're not different. Yeah, it so is. I mean, I just, uh, and I talk on some of these podcasts, I couldn't imagine starting over. I mean, it just takes so much time and effort, you know, whatever you do. And I think it just with time, 10, 15 years in, things will happen. But, you know, you got to put everything you make in that business back into it. It took me, I think, 10 years to pay my business off. Um, and then from there, I mean, you know, I had my student loans paid off, paid off my business. After that, paid off my house. Um, after that paid off the cars. So it does take years, even, you know, a decade or more to get your feet under you. But once you do it, you're so much smarter because of it. And then the bank doesn't have control of you anymore. And so few dentists and doctors are are getting a hold of that. And that's my, one of my big messages now is get your debt under control. Oh, totally. Totally. Because the banks, you know, these guys are always going to banks and they don't want to give you money. But when you have money, they... You, you know, you don't want to get it. And it's like, it's such a trip before, you know, I remember, oh, to get a loan, it'd be like going through hoops. And now they want to give me loans yeah. left and right. It's like, no, nah, I don't need it. I don't need your oh, money. Yeah. I don't oh, need yeah. it anymore, baby. I'm, I'm debt free. And it's yeah. like, Sean, please yeah, we'll give it. you a half million, yeah, you whatever know. you need. You know, it's like, oh, it's crazy. And so we, we need to be that, uh, that sort of beacon for these guys coming out of school that it's possible. It's possible to do it. And you just need to learn a, a few things about it. You may need to listen to the right people. You may need to read the right books. Um, you may have to work six days a week for a while. Exactly. But it's worth it. You do. And it is. It is worth it. And in time, and like, a, like I said, it doesn't matter what field you put your time in. And those first 10 years are just you hunker down and, you you know, you eat top ramen, whatever you have to do to make yeah, it well, happen. I, I think those first 10 years are, are to humble us. Yeah, I think so. And I, we get really... out of school, we're kind of cocky. We think we can do anything that, you know, and the first 10 years are designed to humble us. And that's what I have found to be the best thing about it is, I mean, when I got out of school, I thought I knew everything. Yeah. And now after like 12 years, may, I know now that maybe I know about 10% of what I need to know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's just yeah. real. You just keep on realizing how big the world is and how big the body of knowledge is and you don't know everything. No, it's so true. And it's just reality that with age comes wisdom and it's just all kind of the <laughs> grand plan, I think, but it's just something <laughs> stick with it. You know, uh, things will get better, you know, at the end of the tunnel, but, um, it does back when we were trying to buy a home in the eighties, you know, it was like the hardest thing was getting that down payment. I know I could pay the $1,300 payment, but I don't have yep. like 20 grand down with closing costs. And so that was the hardest thing. And it's the same thing now that some of these guys can make that payment, you know, now it's a three or 4,000 or whatever dollar payment, but that down payment, it's just okay. to have that extra cash. And, for people, most oh, I, I lived, and the whole thing is too, and you know, you live paycheck to paycheck, and I did all the way up to I started my own company in 2002, but and I made good money. I made, you know, I I started out making, you know, like four bucks an hour, but then you worked your way up, and I would make, you know, a couple hundred grand at, towards the end, you know, working for somebody, and you know, back then though, you know, it's like a hundred grand take home, and then you have all your bills, but, um, it was just a dream come true, but you were still, even with all those house payment, the big house payment and the cars and <clears throat> even making all that money, it was still paycheck to paycheck. The kids were going through, you know, high school and that cost so much. And so you just were there and that's where America was built is working for yourself. Cause you're never going to get ahead work for somebody else. So you'll get by and you'll be fine and that's all good. But the ones that really, you know, it's a big risk, but it's a big reward. And, um, the only way you're really truly going to get ahead in life is if you own your own company and it's like, there's nothing better in it. And it's just something that, uh, but there's a lot of work to it and you really, you got to put back into it. You can't, you know, we didn't make a cent the first 10 years, you know, and 10 to 15 years started making it. And then, you know, for the next 15 years, we're going to try to keep it, but you know, it's just something, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it's a trip, man, how it is. But I love seeing these young guys and you know, you're 12 plus years out and, you got it down and, you know, you got to be a worker bee, be a worker bee at the beginning, bust your butt, you know, from your 20 to 40, 45, 50, you know, work hard. And then you can sit back and get a little shape of a round shape and sitting on the couch when you want to watch the housewives of Beverly Hills or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'll shut up now. Okay. So tell me now, did you start out as an associate or did you practice? Tell me a little bit about that if you could. 
I was a young, cocky, naive 25-year-old, which means I went and bought my own practice <laughs> oh, right after dude. I graduated. Falls to the walls. Love it. Got to do it, down, baby. Uh, I, 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 in hindsight, I probably got ripped off by about a hundred grand, and uh, this practice broker promised, yeah, there was a, a practice there, there was patients, and really when I got here, there was just like, there was maybe like five or six patients, no staff, and it was just like a failed practice. He had totally ripped me off. Oh, you're kidding. But good to learn. Good to learn those lessons at twenty five rather than fifty five or forty five. Absolutely. No. Hey, if things happen for a reason, but it may be, uh, you know, for you to do what you did, man. It took some guts and some uh, some wavels to do that. But look at it, man. I mean, you yeah. lived and learned on it. And uh, are you still in the same practice that you bought? Yeah. Um, I I turned the darn thing around. Um, <laughs> hired a staff um, and. Uh, of course, you know, you sign up for every insurance company and you start building it. And um, so I'm, I'm basically in the same place now. I've done some, you know, renovations over the years. Um, and uh, you, you know, we used to have three ops. Now we have four. We're not, we're not big at all. Nor do I want to be big. Cool. Yeah. Um, got one, one hygiene op and uh, three ops for me. And basically, I work out of two ops, and one of them's like a new patient uh, room as well. Okay. Um, so my whole philosophy is keep it lean, keep it small, keep it smart. Beautiful. Love that attitude. How many uh, hygiene you got? I didn't hear that again. Uh, I've got uh, I've got one hygiene room. I only do hygiene one day a week, actually. Um, I, as I as I got rid of all insurances, which I don't take any insurance anymore, I lost a ton of patients. Um, you'd think there was there would be patient loyalty out there, but there really isn't that much. If you don't, yeah. if you're not in their insurance, they're not gonna they're not gonna come. Even if it's even if it costs them ten or twenty dollars, it's just it's not worth it for them. Yeah, it's so weird. Um, so works. yeah, we do hygiene one day a week, and I mostly just focus on doing uh, uh, large cases now. Yeah, and it's just totally fee for service, huh? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Why would I do it any other way? I mean, I well, want people that are gonna value what I do and what I've learned and what I can offer them. I don't oh. want people coming here because because their insurance forces them to. This isn't yeah. that isn't the type of work that you want to do that's fulfilling long term as a career. Well that insurance they got fifteen hundred dollars a year, man, and that's mostly for <laughs> x rays and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well that's the way the Delta Dental is out here and now I think they just Yeah, De- Delta was less. the last Delta was the last insurance I let go of. It was the hardest because, you know, a ton of my patients were on it. Yeah. And um Delta Delta holds the power, you know, insurance companies are some, are some of the biggest corporations in the world. Oh, I mean, you are. look at any downtown metropolitan area, you look at the big buildings, yep. you know, it's not dentists that have their names on the side of those big tall towers. It's, it's a, insurance companies oh, absolutely. and it's banks too. Yeah. Banks, yeah. insurance companies run this world. I was just in Chicago at the yeah, midwinter. It's true. it's true. Oh man. Yeah. And they've been in, they've been in the game a lot longer than any dentist has been in the game. Oh Yeah. Definitely. That's amazing. It really is. You know, and it's probably those same three, four families for the last 200 years that are running it all is what they're saying, but uh, it's sure not the Keatings. They're, they're <laughs> pretty smart. And honestly, if, if most dentists and doctors had been smarter, you know, they'd probably go into insurance. Oh, I know. Well, you know, I know. I, I hate saying that out loud. I hate saying it, but, you know, I think it's kind of true. Bigger isn't better, man. I, I don't want to be the biggest. I just want to be the best. And that's just, um, I agree. I you know. know, it's just it's so much more rewarding and I can go home at a, at a reasonable time each day and soak in my people. And um, it's just we sleep real well because, you know, we treat our people real well and our doctors, you know, like working with us. And I just think that's in any business. You, you just have a good heart and try to do the right thing with it no matter what you do. Yeah. And you'll be successful for sure. I agree. Well, so, dude, tell me a little bit about you're into the sleep dentistry uh, defined. A, was that a book you did or is it a course? Tell me a little no, bit I, about I, your I, sleep I, course. Uh, well, no, I, I do sedation dentistry. Okay. Um, sleep dentistry defined is just what I what I call it, basically, that we want to be the best in sleep dentistry, which for us is sedation dentistry, oh, which okay. basically means that we can make people comfortable for their treatment so that we can get all their work done that they paid um that they've um, put off for the last 10 or 20 years. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. I thought it was because there's so many guys getting into this sleep type, uh, you know, uh, area of dentistry. And it's like one of their brothers doing that. But that's kind of, I think. I'm not really into sleep appliances. Um, You know, I went to a class and it's just not exciting. And everybody else is trying to do it. I'll let them do it. Yeah. 
but I, but sedation dentistry, I see that, and you could do full rehabs, everything. Uh, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a neat thing. Go to yeah. sleep, wake up, and either we got your implants synced, or we have your finals, you know, put in, and that's got to be amazing. That's right. But then again, it's got to be kind of you got to be kind of scary though, scared. You got to watch that stuff, man. I mean, every time I get put out, I always tell that anesthesiologist. Dude, I hope you got uh, your A game today. Please let me wake up. <laughs> Here, and that's but... that's what we bring. I, we bring our A game. We I only really work about three days a week, so I bring my I I bring my A plus plus game those three days. Beautiful, love that man. <laughs> so tell me, what's what's like your favorite procedures you like doing? You like doing crown preps? You like doing? Tell um, me, tell me what you like of, doing. Most of what I do now, most of what I do is full mouth extraction and um, uh, either locator over dentures or uh, fixed uh, fixed hybrid. Uh, zirconia dentures. Beautiful, love that. Now that's neat. And I'll do, I'll do, I do full mouths of crowns and veneers as well. Um, I did a full arch of crowns this morning. Um, so you know, my my patients need a lot of work, and uh, they want to look better, they want to feel better, and they want to be uh, asleep um, while they're getting the procedure done. Oh, that's awesome, dude. No, it really is. I know we're going to start working uh, in the future together, so I look forward to showing you what we could do on this. Send me the big old yeah. veneer case, baby. I'll have it back to you by All the right. end of the week. <laughs> yeah, I'll be Hollywood. Now, let me sure. know on that. I, I'm excited for that. We we love doing the four on ones. We love doing the you know over denture cases. It's just it's such a neat thing and. Um, it's very rewarding, man. And, you know, back in the day, you, th you th just sink a couple implants on 6 and 11 and do a denture to it to kind of hold it. And now we're we're yeah. doing some neat stuff with, uh, you know, the hybrids and stuff. So it's just amazing um, how far technology has come recently. What about with you with the CAD CAN systems, um, like the scanners? Are you thinking about getting anything like that for impressions and stuff or um, not really? You know, I don't do um, uh, I don't do CEREC or E4D because it would actually slow me down. Okay. Um, and I think more dentists would actually think about that. Um, but I don't have a scanner right now. But I'm It's the next thing I'm going to buy, but it's going to be a year or two. I just want the next versions that come out just to be a little bit quicker, a little bit better um you know I, uh, what i'm doing now works really well and i know that uh, the scanners are out there so it'll be a year or two before i get one oh good for you no let us know when you're thinking about that we got some things coming up um with okay. a couple different companies that um could probably be beneficial for you for sure we're going to roll that Excellent. out in the next cool. few weeks through rolling okay. so we're excited about that but um no that's awesome so what's been your marketing strategy uh are you doing social media are you doing mailers what are you doing to drive patients to your practice no i've been um focused on marketing for the last 12 years now and um i really really believe in uh tv and um uh search engine optimization and uh, google adwords yeah oh yeah that's it i i heard uh my guys were telling me this dude's all over the freaking tv stations like uh, you do like commercials or something or just like on different tv shows I do, I do commercial <laughs> commercials infomercials i go on good morning like good morning oregon and and talk about what i do on there too so you just need to have a have a public persona basically show the the people that that you're, you know, the public that you're a real person that you can help and what you can do. No kidding. Well, you're a good looking man. I'm looking at your picture here. You know who you look like? You look like Evan Spiegel. Oh, and what's his wife's name? Miranda. Miranda Kerr. Oh, dude. <laughs> you kind of look like him. Snapchat. You know where you can take that picture well, and it dissolves in two minutes? That well for me, then. <laughs> no, I never got into that Snapchat stuff, man. That'd get me in trouble. Just stay away. Just stay away. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that. I don't even do any of the. I don't have any of the social medias to my phone or anything. I got, I got some. We do, we do some Facebook stuff and some other things, but we do it as a company and on the company computers. But when I get home, I'm home. My wife and my family. I don't bring it home. I remember back in the day nope. when Dental Town came out. I was so into that where I'd come home and it'd be dinner and I'd be thinking about this post I did and this doctor getting on me or we're going back and forth. And it's just, it's such a, it's like, you know, old high school or, you know, junior high days. Yeah, I try to stay away from stuff like that. I don't, I don't, I don't really do any social media. I mean, we do social media. I just pay people to do it. I don't even, I don't even know how to log onto my Facebook account. Yeah, either do I. I don't even have the codes or whatever they are, the passwords. Yeah, my social media people do them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, nah, look at me. Look at me. Look at no. Nah. Yeah. I'm not into that anymore. No. I, do, I went through oh, that. I, I, <laughs> I just care about me. I care about a few other people. And uh, really, like, I don't, you know, 
I don't need a, a fake internet life. I don't need to follow somebody else's fake internet life either. I got enough to live with right here. Yeah. And I got guys from 40 years ago in elementary school. It's like, dude, I haven't called you in 40 years. Probably a reason. I don't really want to talk to you now. Just kidding. But uh, it's a weird how they come out and you, you see some people's like, and even myself, I mean, you don't look like you did back in 1982 or 80 or whatever. It's like mm. a little different. <laughs> but uh, oh, that's funny. But so what about um, do you de- attend any dental conventions or gatherings? What are you doing for like uh, your CE and stuff? Uh, yeah, I was just gosh, I go to I, took, I go to CE all the time, actually. Um, so I, I went to a full three day sedation course last weekend. Um, and uh, I mean, I've just I've done so much CE. So that's awesome. What about with you when you're not working? What do you like doing? You like uh, you're talking a little bit about you doing some hiking stuff. What do you do for? Let's see. Uh, Today, I'll probably go swimming. Um, I travel a lot for fun. We're going to England next week, uh, going to Italy in July. We just got back from Maui. um, And uh, let's see. I I play piano. I snowboard. um, You know, we we, we like to we like to get get dirty in life. Go have fun. You know, that's what we do. I like to play Frisbee, too. Believe it. Frisbee's a lot of fun. Oh, Frisbee. You ever did Frisbee golf? <laughs> uh, it's all right. Yeah. That, that we, I used to try to do that, but I'm not real good at that. For, try to hit that no. middle chain. No. <laughs> it's like kind of crazy. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and sadly, sadly, I have to, I had to give up skateboarding, you know, almost <laughs> 10 years ago. So that's out of my life, but I miss it. Yeah. I hear that. Hey, you keep busting yeah. your butt, man. In about another 10 years, you'll be done, <laughs> ready to do whatever you want again. Just. You'll be fine, man. But uh, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. It's all about that long-term goal. You've got to always have that goal in mind. Exactly, you really do. So, tell me real quick on what kind of advice can you give uh, some of our newer uh, dentists that are starting off? Some do's and don'ts, on if you could for us. Okay. So, number one, don't be afraid to fail. You're going to fail again and again and again. You're going to make mistake after mistake, but you have to do that to get better. Dental school does not really show us a way to fail or anything like that. But once we're out in the real world, it happens when we're trying to get better. We're trying to push the limits. Um, so don't be afraid to fail. Um, and then if you do fail or if you do mess up, you need to be honest with your patients. Absolutely. They will they will thank you so much. And uh, it is um, the, best, <laughs> the best piece of advice I can give them. Man. The other things are manage your debt. Manage your debt again and again and again. Get out of debt um, so you can do what you want. And then you need to learn. You need to learn every day. You need to go to, you need to spend so much time and money on CE because really dental school was just, was just the start of your education. I mean, you spent 400000 on dental school, so you need to start spending money on CE, and that's the only way you're going to get better. Great words there, Dr. Lampe, for sure. I was actually um, at the dental show at the Chicago Midwinter. I just got back in yesterday, mm-hmm. and great show. And um, for Cal Lab, I go to Cal Lab each year. There's a bunch of uh, business uh, lab owners we get together. And there's about three or 400 of us, and it's just a great show each year. And <clears throat> I did a keynote speech there a few years back, and this year's keynote speaker was – uh, Dr. Frank Spear. And that's the first time I've ever heard the dude. And, um, you know, I just heard great things about him and his, you know, program over at Scottsdale and, you know, yeah, no, I, I love, I love what they've done, but they're, they're very, very corporate now and they're so salesy. So I, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I used to, I've, I've taken some of Spears' classes like five or six times each, mm-hmm. but I don't know. There's been a change over there where I swear it's all about marketing. It's all about selling you. And that's uh, something I just don't agree with. Well, some people don't for sure. And it's something that I know they did sell um, to a conglomerate a few years ago. But I'm just oh, saying, yeah. I've never heard the dude. And I've, I've had John Coy's. They, they were partners way back in the day. And, um, they were. I, and I had John Coy's. You're partnered with a bigger corporation, uh, and it helped them blow up. Yeah. And uh, I actually that's had the truth. Coy's here at my lab. And so actually, when I was done speaking, and I, I like what he was saying about the lab industry, because, you know, now, you think Spear, you think all the Sarek and all the stuff and all this and the labs are going to go away. And I never really thought that. I have some Sarek doctors. No, that no, do, no, I, no. I do a lot of their stuff, you know, their hard work and the implants and all the, you know, veneer, veneer case. So I have a respect for him, but I always kind of worry a little bit. But he kind of uh, broke down some numbers for the lab industry going forward. And it was very positive. And I just I came across uh, I came away with it that. 
it pumped up the lab industry. We're not going to go away in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, more and more doctors will get some of the, you know, chair side mills and, you know, it's the onesies and the twosies, you know, the bre bread and butter yeah. cases, maybe some bigger cases in the future, but they're always going to need labs to kind of get them through cases to help treatment plan cases and to work together on some of the tougher cases that we are going to yeah. have for years to come. So it's kind of neat. And I, I went yeah, and talked yeah. to him you know, afterwards and it was, he's pretty, pretty, pretty neat down to earth, dude. I, I just thought he was like, uh, I like, I like him a lot. I totally, I love him a lot. I mean, I've got so much respect for Frank Spear Yeah, and he has, he has inspired so many people. He's obviously a great clinician and he's, he, he my education base started with learning from him and then basically going from there. So I would, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without learning from him. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's, that's, that's what a good mentor does. You know, a good teacher does, you know, teaches students and the students can go figure it out. And one day they'll be the teachers too, you know? Absolutely. No, that's great, man. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a neat thing. This field we're in, I love it. It's been very good to me. Like the, what you call it? You say baseball been very, very good to me. Well, dental, <laughs> the dental world have been very good to us, man. And I'm very <clears throat> thankful for sure. And, uh, but Ben, Hey, Lampy, you're the man, dude. Can't thank you enough for I'm taking the it, time. I, I know we're supposed to only be a half an hour. But we lo we went a little over, no, but that's all right. uh, man, I yeah. can't thank you yeah, enough. Yeah, I've got um, you know, I wrote I wrote my book last year, uh, Live Small, Live Big. It kind of teaches young docs how to uh, manage their debt and start uh, start uh, their own practices. Oh, okay. Um, I also I also own Beyond Dentistry, which is going to have our uh, seminar. Um, in October in Portland, amazing Portland, Oregon, uh, for yeah. our foundations of implant and full mouth restoration class. It's going to be awesome, man. Oh, dude, so we'll put that we're taking on, it to the next level. We'll put that on our show notes, everything with your book and with yeah. your uh, seminar and stuff for sure. And I'm sure a lot of doctors will get out to that for sure. I'm sure it'll be a great one. Portland's a great town to go to. I've never been there and I, I want to get out there. Portland's and, uh, the best place in the world. It's... That's why I live here. <laughs> come, come and join. Yeah, I'll be there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, well, hey, uh, Dr. Lampy, thank you so much for coming on the Dental Up podcast. And man, uh, congratulations to all your success. And I can't thank you enough. God bless you and your family. And um, we'll talk to you real soon. Can't wait, man. All right, dude. Good talking to you, man. Hey, take care. All right. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up podcast show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.